the Massachusetts government is tightening its belt. The state's facing a revenue shortfall, and its lawmakers work to adjust the budget. Governor Moore Healy is taking steps to cut back costs in the executive branch, announcing a partial hiring freeze in some areas of her administration. The city of Boston is facing similar concerns as empty office space means less revenue coming in from commercial property taxes. To keep residents from paying more as a result, Mayor Wu is proposing a hike in the commercial property tax rate, but her plan is already getting some pushback. So how are the politics of austerity playing out on Beacon Hill and in City Hall? I'm joined by Commonwealth Beacon State House supporter Gin Dempsius and Greater Boston News Bureau co-founder Yawu Miller. Pleasure to see both of you. Thanks for being here. Yawu, Governor Healy and her administration are stressing that this is not a hiring freeze. They prefer the phrase hiring controls. Uh, that being said, there are people who are crying foul over this and saying it's really going to limit her uh, ability to get stuff done. I want to read a statement from the group Progressive Massachusetts from their policy director, Jonathan Cohn. He said, the governor cannot fulfill promises of improving the T with the hiring freeze. We can't deliver on robust public services, a cleaner environment, and so much more if we're allowing state government to shrink by attrition, which was also a hallmark of the Baker administration. He also objected to state police getting a carve out from this because the governor or the government is going to be able to hire in, uh, in that particular area. Do you think that these cuts are as big a deal as progressive mass and other critics on the left are suggesting? Um, I mean, I think the, the uh, undergirding progressive masses critique is their opposition to um, the tax cuts that yes. uh, the governor put through, specifically the tax cuts on um, capital gains and, you know, tax cuts that were um, that were targeted at the wealthy. Um, and so from their perspective, these cut the cuts that we're going through now are entirely unavoidable. Um, so that thereby, therefore, or, or if, if we hadn't cut yeah, taxes, if we, had we not cut taxes, like we wouldn't be in this position of a you know temporary hiring freeze that could perhaps be renewed in June when it's set to expire. Do you see the uh, do you see the cuts as drastically limiting government's ability to do what government needs to do? As you mentioned, it's temporary freeze. Mm -hmm. Not everyone is is part of it. Do you think it's a, a great big deal or not? Um, it, you know, again, it's it's it, 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 it was uh, it, it's perhaps unavoid. I mean, it was perhaps avoidable. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I and I, you know, I mean, part of what progressive mass was saying as well is, you know, if you're going to do, you know, achieve everything you want to achieve with uh, reforming the MBTA, can you do that without hiring? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then why is public safety being held harmless in this when crime rates all over the country, and certainly in, in Massachusetts, are, are declining. Yeah. Why does that budget have to keep going up? Questions worth pondering. Again, I want to ask you, this comes as tax revenues have been coming in lower than expected for the better part of a year now. And uh, my recollection is that even when projections are downgraded, uh, they continue to come in lower than expected. That being said, is part of the context here the great big costs that are associated with managing the migrant crisis in Massachusetts? Because that is not cheap for the Healy administration. Certainly, that's part of it. I, I, I think also uh, it's important to keep in mind we have uh, a few more months uh, to, of, of revenue to look at as well. Uh, so uh, they do have some runway. And as they're prepping right now, next year's uh, fiscal budget starts in July. Um, they're, they're, you know, the house is going to take a crack at what they think revenues are going to be. Um, and then, and then the, uh, the, the, the Senate is next and, and then they hash out. Uh, so there, there is some time to, to, to kind of figure out what next year looks like and uh, as well as kind of what the rest of the year, uh, finishes out. This is, this is an ongoing, uh, issue and, and, you know, we're, we, the media obviously is covering it piece by piece, but there is a larger picture and a larger fiscal picture that, that, uh, that we need to zoom out on. Uh, let's shift gears and talk a little bit about what's going on at City Hall. Yabu, Mayor Wu's austerity move is a little trickier to unpack, maybe just conceptually. It comes on the heels of a report in February by the Boston Policy Institute, which found that the valuation of commercial real estate in the city was going to be dropping and that that was going to lead to less, less tax revenue being generated. They said specifically with the value of office space expected to decline 20 to 30 percent by 2029, 
in commercial real estate prices by 12 to 8 percent. They estimated that Blossom will face a revenue shortfall of $1.2 billion to $1.5 billion over the next five years. So what would it do for Mayor Wu in the city if she got the authority to increase tax rates on commercial real estate at a time when their valuation is going down? I mean, I think she has three choices. One is to do nothing, and then, you know, which would lead to making cuts in city government. Another would be to, to um, you know, increase taxes across the board and thereby increasing taxes on um, property owners in Boston, including many people who live here. Residential which could property owners. For, yeah, as well residential, as which yeah. would, which would for, you know, could force up rents, could, you know, obviously um, everybody's tax bill would increase. And, you know, you're, you know, potentially alienating voters versus, you know, what she's proposing, which is to put the burden, more of the burden on business. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, it's pr pr probably the politically the most um, expedient thing to do would be to, to, to transfer this burden onto, onto the business sector. Ken Dumpsey how does the business community feel about this? I know that the announcement released by the Wu administration included approving quotes from some members of the business community, but what's your sense of, broadly speaking, how they feel? Sure, there's, there's mixed feelings. The Greater Boston Real Estate Board uh, is unhappy. They already clashed with uh, the mayor over her proposal for, for rent control. Um, so there's a, a, a feeling among some in the business community that uh, they're being asked to, to do even more um, as as they're struggling with, uh, you know, a downtown that just hasn't seen all that much foot, foot traffic since the pandemic. Um, so so I, it's, it's, it's a complicated formula. City Hall will push back on the, the, the word shortfall. Um, in, in their view, yes. the, the revenue is going to keep coming in. Uh, it's, it's just a question of how do you slice that pie? Um, and what they're trying to do with this with this measure, similar to what Mayor Menino did, is to, as, as Yahoo said, shift it onto, onto uh, business. And I guess it all depends on what you mean when you use the term shortfall, right? It right. might have some connotations for some people, different connotations for other people. On a somewhat related note, Yahoo, the mayor signed an ordinance this week creating a brand new city planning department in Boston, the old Boston Planning and Development Agency, which was preceded by the Boston Redevelopment Authority, is not entirely gone, but it's pretty close to totally withered away. How is this going to change the way development in Boston works? Ideally, um, you know, the, the separating planning out of the development functions that, you know, there, there would be more, more separation that developers, therefore, are not driving what, you know, what happens in Boston, what Boston looks like, but that, you know, a, a combination of residents and, um, you know, elected officials could sort of, you know, do more thorough planning and, you know, avoid situations like the one we're in, where perhaps like where we have all this lab space that nobody wants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, you know, I, I mean, that's the ideal outcome, I think, for many people in Boston. You sound a little skeptical, are you? Um, no, I mean, I, 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 I think we'll, I think a lot of the details uh, or, you know, I mean, will be hashed out, you know, we'll see what this actually looks like. It's a very different plan than what Mayor Wu was proposing when she was on the campaign trail. Um, so, you know, I, I think that the proof will be, you know, like in how it actually works. Again, the vote here was, um, it was split. Eight councillors supported this change. Five did not. They either voted no or I think didn't vote or voted present. And it was a mix of the most conservative members of the council and a couple of the most progressive voices on the council. Um, what, if anything, should we make of that? Are these the, uh, the sort of ideological sections of the city that are going to be subjecting the new status quo to the closest scrutiny, or is there some other takeaway here? I think it's worth noting that one of the councillors who voted against it was uh, was a former B PDA staffer. Uh, John for Fitzgerald, a right? Uh, John Fitzgerald, uh, who represents Dorchester, um, and uh, you know he 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 is part of a, a group that that defends what the BPDA has done at least in the last decade uh, or so. Um, I think it's interesting to know that on the, on the campaign trail, my my sense was in 2021, a lot of people 
I mean, the BPDA and the BRA has always been a punching bag throughout multiple mayoral elections. Um, and I think for a lot of people, when you say BPDA reform, that can mean a lot of different things. Um, and now we're seeing what uh, what that reform or overhaul or whatever you want to call it uh, looks like. And there's some folks who, if they're seeing uh, a loss of control to them, that's concerning. Um, so so I, I think, you know, the devil is in the details, as the old saying goes. Um, I do think you know, I did reread her document from from um, I believe it was 2019 or, or whenever whenever she it was the, yeah. abolished the BPDA. I mean, it did, it, she did write in there that it's a, a quote living document um, and and a and a starting point. So um, you know, I guess I guess changes, especially when you're talking about the city council and other stakeholders, there there are going to be some changes, um, and it's really up to the voters to you know when she's running for election next year to hold her to account of if they feel that she delivered on what she promised. I got to jump on that last statement that you made. We've got about 30 seconds left, but you said when she runs for re-election next year, she has not officially said she's running, but she gets to claim victory with this new planning department. She made a politically, as Yabu said, expedient choice uh, going to Beacon Hill looking for authority to increase taxes on commercial real estate holders. Do both of you assume that she is, in fact, running again next year? At this yes, point? yes, absolutely. Uh, absolutely from you and Gin. Yes. Okay. Well, there it is. Let's consider this an informal announcement or a formal announcement. We, uh, we just made news here. Gin Dumsius, Yahoo Miller.